Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video where we're exploring sound design on the Korg Volker FM. Now, the last video I posted was all about the envelopes, and when I was editing that video, I realized there are a couple of things that I wanted to mention that I didn't put in the video, and there was no real place for me to edit them in, so I thought I'd put out a little sub-episode just to talk about these two other little factors that I think are worth discussing. In the previous video, I made quite a lot of how wonderfully slow the envelopes are, on this synth can go. Really long, sweeping sounds are possible. What I didn't talk about was how fast they can go, uh, and in some cases, dangerously fast. So um, let's just dive into the edit menu and take a look. So this is the same patch as we had in the previous video. Two operators, operator one is acting as the carrier, operator two is acting as the modulator. So if we are adjusting the envelope, on operator one, what we're doing is we're adjusting the amplitude envelope. So the envelope which governs the volume of the sound, what we would call our VCA envelope uh, on a analog synth. So here we've got envelope generator rate one, which is uh, essentially our attack uh, portion of our envelope, if you like. And as we discussed, we can have it go very, very slow indeed. That sound will fade in over a very, very long period of time, and that's wonderful. It makes for great evolving pads and, and wonderful big long sweeps and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. However, it can also go very, very fast indeed. And if we push this envelope generator rate up to 99, and at the moment um, this is going to be jumping uh, all the way up to the full level of our envelope as well, when we play notes, we get quite a noticeable click. So the envelope is jumping very, very quickly from zero all the way up to its fullest um, value, 99. Very, very, very quick. And that's given us this kind of click happening. And also if we go to our uh, envelope generator rate four and put that all the way up to full as well, we'll also get that click kind of happening at the end of the note as well. It's not quite as noticeable when it's there. Very noticeable if we play lots of notes quickly one after another. So what I just wanted to mention is that usually what I do when I am making sounds where I want the attack to, to seem instant, I tend to put my envelope generator rate somewhere in the region of 80 to 90, depending on how hard I want that attack to be. So um, if we go to... 80 and have a listen what this sounds like we can't really hear anything fading up it seems instant but it also seems kind of soft maybe uh, if we push this up towards uh, 90 it's kind of a different flavor of being instant uh, but no click there's certainly no noticeable fade in, but it is sort of noticeably harder than it was at 80. And if we go any higher than 90, we start to get that click again, which as I say, you may want to use it because it might be a stylistic choice, but in general sounds, I, I tend to find it gets in the way a little bit. So that's the first thing I just wanted to mention. So the other thing I wanted to mention, um, and I kind of alluded to it earlier in that video, um, was that there is also a pitch envelope, and I didn't really show that off, and I kind of wish I had, so let's just go and take a look at that quickly. So the pitch envelope applies to all of the operators all at once. So it's not a per operator thing, so if we move across our operators here, we get into the all category, and the first um, parameters that we get here are PT, R1, PTR2, PTR3, PTR4, and then PTL1, 2, 3, and 4. And these are pitch envelopes. And they work almost ex exactly in the same way as the uh, as the operator envelopes. Um, just a couple of things to mention, however. The first thing is that they are nowhere near as fast or slow, for that matter. Um, so you can't really get quite the same extremes in movements, but then maybe with pitch you don't want to. So at the moment, we've got a sound where there's no pitch envelope being applied at all. If we uh, scroll across to our levels, we'll see at the moment they're all set to 50. And what 50 means is no change in pitch. 
So if we go over to um, pitch rate one, let's make it a little bit slower. And if we go over to pitch level one and maybe make it higher, what we'll hear when we hit a key is that we have a rise up to the pitch, which is represented by 70, and then an almost instant drop down to um, the original pitch, which is in pitch level two, because we have 99 as our rate for pitch rate two. So the slight thing that's, um, that's weird about the pitch um, envelope that you need to bear in mind is that if we're talking about the starting pitch, here though it actually starts at our original pitch and then goes up and then drops back down. Pitch rate one is going to raise up from whatever pitch level four is, go up to 70 and then drop back down to pitch level two. I know that seems really, really weird. This is actually the way that the normal envelopes work as well. Pitch level four is basically your resting pitch, if you like. So this is the pitch which is kind of playing in the background before you hit any key. And when you hit a key, you start by doing envelope rate one, which is why you get that rise up. But otherwise, the way that this works is exactly the same. There's no magic here if we want to make it drop down slowly after we've done that first rise up. We would set pitch level two as being low. We pitch rate two as being slow. And there's our slow drop down. And then, and then what you hear there is the jump back up from pitch um, level three. I really like the sort of slowing down record sound that actually... <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. <laughs> it's like a sad cat. Why a black hole. Happy again. Okay, so those were just the, the two things that I wanted to make you aware of before we moved on to talk about LFOs in the next video because I just I couldn't help but feel like I'd missed them out on the previous video. Uh, so I hope you found that useful, a nice little add-on to the previous video. If you did, make sure you give the video the old, there they are, the old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos on the Volcure FM and various other synthesis bits and bobs as well. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you again soon.